For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. we we'll just stop reading there. And he uses several expressions there in uh, verse 6. He says, when we were without strength. Uh, he uses the term ungodly. And uh, you come across the term sinners. Later on, I think it's in verse 10, uh, he, he says that we were enemies of God. And we don't think of ourselves in those terms. And yet that's how God describes uh, the normal, let me use the word natural, human heart. We're sinners. Uh, we're enemies of God. Uh, we need to understand sin is a fact. The origin uh, was with Satan. But the Bible says here it entered our world through Adam. Did you notice verse 12 there? Wherefore as by one man, one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. That man was Adam. And, and you know, sin is universal. It didn't just affect him. It didn't just affect a few people. Uh, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. You know, even nature proclaims this. Uh, there's times when it's really nice to look at nature. But you know, nature is, is tough. You get stuck out in it, it can kill you. Uh, I've read several things lately where you know, a young mother got bit by a snake and died. Uh, people get lost out in, in the bush here. Man, we've got, we've got a lot of spare ground going. And uh, you get stuck out there, you, you can lose your life. In Romans chapter 8, he says, We know the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Uh, all of creation uh, confirms uh, that sin is, is a fact. We see the, uh, the fact of sin. We need to also see the nature of sin. I'm going to give you seven different sides to sin. Uh, one of them is there in Romans 5 and verse 6. He uses the term ungodly. Ungodliness is a, is a pretty good description of what sin is. What that means is without reverence. Ungodliness is the fact that, in general, people treat God without reverence. Have you noticed it? You noticed it lately? Uh, it's nothing new. <laughs> uh, that's the way uh, Adam and Eve did. You know, God had told them what to do. They said, nah, we won't do that. Uh, we ignore and devalue God. How often we see it uh, in, uh, in the media, uh, in our neighborhood, in our families. Ungodliness, treating God without reverence. And the amazing thing is his response to that. He loves us. <laughs> You know, Romans 5, 8 there. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, we treat him with disdain. We treat him with irreverence. He says, I love you. I can, I can do better than what you're doing. And uh, you know, what, a, what a lovely God we have. Ungodliness. Uh, the words are not all here in, in Romans. The next one is in 1 John 3 and verse 4. It's the word transgression. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. I should have given you a piece of paper with all these on there where you could, you could keep notes. You're, you're welcome to do that. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Some of these we oftentimes will use as definitions of sin. This is, this is one. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. Transgression means to step outside. You step outside the law. And the, my understanding of this word is that you do it on purpose. Transgression is not, oops, it's here's the line and we flop our hairy toe over the line and say, I'm 
That's the line's not going to limit me. Transgression. We know what's right, and we do what's wrong anyway. Of course, none of us would ever do that. <laughs> uh, oftentimes we do that. We make choices all the time where we know what the standard is. We know what the, where the line is, but we say, oh, I have an exception today. So I'll just push across the line. I'll transgress the law. And the Bible says sin is the transgression of the law. A third one is the word iniquity. If you look back in Romans chapter 4 and verse 7, you'll come across these as you read the Bible, different words, many of them just the, the general subject of sin. But each one has a specific window into this uh, truth uh, about sin. Iniquity. Romans chapter 4 verse 7 says, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are are covered. Uh, iniquity has to do with lawlessness or being wicked. Uh, Jesus made a statement about this. Let me just read it to you. As he was uh, preaching one time, here, here's what he said in, in Matthew 24. Get the right chapter. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Isn't that what we see? Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Uh, very little real love in, in our world. People want love. People look for love. But because iniquity abounds, it, it, it just grows cold. Trans, uh, transgression, uh, ungodliness, iniquity, each one has to do with sin. The next one is in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6, and it's the word disobedience. We understand that one. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Very simple word. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. You know, disobedient is the way we're born. Parents, it shouldn't surprise you when your, your children disobey. That's the way we're born. That's the way we were, even though we're grown now. Uh, we're children of disobedience. Uh, it's rebellion against authority. It's just, it's just the way we are. That's our nature. Uh, disobedient. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes we'll get people to do things by telling them to, to do what we don't want them to do. Because we know their perverse nature. It's exactly what God is talking about here. Y you've experienced it. And sometimes at the strangest times, you know, someone will tell you something, you think, ooh, uh, rebellion in our hearts. It's because of, of sin. Another one in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it's not so much a word as a description. You probably know this verse, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Come short. Miss the mark is what it means. I, if I understand it right, it's an archery term. You know, you shoot at the mark, you miss it. But that doesn't really picture how, how strong this, this word is. It's more like if someone said, uh, we're going to have a contest to see who can jump to the moon. <laughs> now, some of you would probably jump further than I, than I would. But n we would all fall short, very short. <laughs> and that's what, that's what he's talking about here. Sin is to miss the mark. Y you know, sometimes we sin because we know what it is and we decide, no, I'm not going to do it. Sometimes we sin because that's just our nature. But God is describing here that many times we sin because we're just unable to live righteously. We miss the mark. We're unable. We have the inability to live a holy life without Christ. Failure to meet God's standard is what he's talking about here. And God's standard is perfection. The Bible says without holiness, we're not going to see the Lord. So what that's saying is in ourselves, we're not going to see the Lord without some help. Sin is a problem. The more we look at this this morning, the more it should cause you to see sin is much more than we credit it with. The next one is Ephesians 2, verse 1. It's the word trespass. Uh, if I understand these right, this is a little different than transgression. Trespass. Ephesians 2, 1 says... And you hath he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. Trespass means a false step. 
Now, sometimes we sin by accident. But you know what? It's still sin. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Or, oh, I didn't know that. It's still sin. Trespass. Transgression, we do it on purpose. We know it's wrong. We just say, I'm going to do it anyway. Trespass, sometimes we just step across the line. And sometimes we don't even know the line is there. We don't understand God's, God's holiness. The last one is in 1 John 5, verse 10. It's the word unbelief. 1 John 5 and verse 10. I've given you a lot of scriptures this morning, and I don't apologize for that. We, we need to know God's Word. If, if nothing else, you'll learn how to find books in the Bible. If you've got these electronic things, you, that's all right, too. <laughs> 1 John 5.10 says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. That's a very strong verse, very severe, isn't it? He says, when we don't believe God, when we commit the sin of unbelief, what we're doing is we're calling God a liar. You ever been called a liar? Especially when you know you're telling the truth. <laughs> not so, it's not so bad when you know you're lying. Listen, God cannot lie. And the sin of unbelief is, you, you know, we read, he particularly relates it to what he, God has written. We read what God has written and we say, I don't believe that. The sin of unbelief. Calling God a liar. You know, sin is an awful reality. And the Bible says all have sinned. And you know, as you look at life and as you look at Scripture, you see the terrible consequences that it has. Uh, Rome, turn with me to Romans chapter 1. We'll look at a couple more Scriptures here. Romans chapter 1. If you read through the book of, uh, through the ch first chapter of Romans, it's really an awful chapter in, in some ways because it talks about the downward progress of sin in, in mankind. It's terrible. And one of the things sin does is it distorts spiritual things. You know, God made us to be spiritual people. God made us to have a relationship with Him, and God is a spirit. You know, so we need to, it needs to at least include our spirit. And in, in Romans 1, verses 20 and 21, sin distorts our spirit. It distorts spiritual things. He says, The invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. He's saying God's not playing games with you. He's made Himself clear who He is and how to know Him. In verse 21, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Yeah, God made it plain, and, and we mess around with sin, and, and it becomes all distorted. Yeah, it's a... I don't know if you've looked around or talked to different ones lately about different religions, but there are just some so messed up religions. You know, people trying to do this and that and pleasing who knows what, you know, the, the God of the earth and the God of themselves. And uh, it, it's just wretched. And people are so unhappy. And it's because when they knew God, they didn't, wouldn't worship Him as God. There's been at least twice in history when everybody knew and worshiped the Lord at creation and after the flood. And boy, it didn't take long for people's hearts, for sin, to distort the message. Sin distorts uh, spiritual things. Look at the next few verses. It not only distorts spiritual things, it corrupts your soul. Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. It corrupts. It corrupts your soul. You know, as people give in to sin and as sin has its way, they'll, they'll worship birds and Beasts and creeping things. Isn't it amazing how we'll turn from the, the glory of God to all these things? And he says that they worship and serve the creature more than the creator. They serve the creation more than the creator. Uh, sin corrupts. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 18 and 19, he tells us that sin blinds. 
Ephesians 4, verse 18, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's, that's in them because of the blindness of their heart. Have you ever tried to share Christ with someone and they just couldn't see? They're blind. They're blinded. Only the Lord can open their heart, open their, their soul to the things of the truth. The Bible says, in fact, they're dead in trespasses and sins. But God can raise the dead. You know, God can change a heart. Sin is what corrupts us. Sin is what distorts us. Sin is what, what blinds us. In verse 19, it hardens us, who, who being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. There's another word for sin. To work all uncleanness with greediness. Sin hardens us. Uh, past feeling. You know, you, you'll read in the news every day about people who commit horrendous crimes. How can they do that? Because their heart is hardened by sin. You didn't, they didn't start like that. They started off as an innocent little, little child. But nobody showed them the way of righteousness. Nobody showed them how to deal with their sin. So sin got a hold of them. And, and it distorted them and it corrupted them and it blinded them and it hardened them until they become the person that, that they are. And yet, you know, even, even people who are nice neighbors, these same things are true toward God. They still are happy to call God a liar. They're happy to transgress Him. They're not worried about the things of sin or righteousness. You know, there's many effects that sin has. We won't take the time this morning to look at them all, but death, the fact that there's death, there's disease. Families are broken up, murder and lust and selfishness. Sin has a terrible effect in our world. The Bible says that the result of sin... You know, we see the fact of sin, we see the nature of sin, we also need to see the, the result. And God says the wages of sin is death. The verses that we started off with there in, in Romans, he says, uh, by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all of sin. The wages of sin is death. In fact, Jesus said in, in Matthew 25 that sin involves everlasting punishment. Yeah, the world doesn't like that idea. The world doesn't like the idea, the fact that God has said there's a, there's a hell, there's a place that people go when they reject Christ. But Jesus taught, Matthew 25, 46, He said, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal. There's a difference. We're going to spend eternity somewhere. And sin, if we don't deal with our sin, if we don't let God deal with our sin, it'll be separation from God. That word death there in Romans, when he says the wages of sin is death, it's not just physical death. It's separation from Him who is life. Forever. I believe God can do different things than we can. God can wipe things from His memory. And I believe God is, you know, when the time comes, God is just going to put the lost out of His memory. They'll just be lost forever. And the Bible says it, it's, it's not a place uh, that's nice. Jesus said in John chapter 3, you know, we, we know John 3, 16, John 3, 18, Jesus is speaking, He says, He that believeth on Him is not condemned. Believe on the Lord. But he that believeth not is condemned already. It's not that they do something to get condemned. They're born condemned. We're born sinners. He that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You see, there's a, there's a consequence to our sin. Death, separation, condemnation. But you know, God has a remedy for that. That's who Jesus is. Jesus is God's remedy for sin. What a blessing. He's the Savior. When John saw him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. You know, before they had lamb after lamb, thousands. You read some of those books, there's times when they would, they would literally sacrifice hundreds of, of sheep at one time. But when Jesus came, he, he's the perfect lamb. He's the final lamb. He's the permanent lamb. Takes away the sin of the world. What a blessing. God's remedy for the lost. Now let me say this. For the Christian, God deals with our individual sins. When you get saved, 
sorry, but uh, you probably won't quit sinning. But God has forgiven your sin. But he deals with your sins. Uh, when, when you're saved, your sins are forgiven, and uh, you're his child. You're, you're no longer a sinner. You're a saint. Uh, but God still has us deal with our sins. You know, he says, confess our sins, forsake them, and so on. Uh, he says if we don't deal with them, he'll chasten us as with, with children. But you know, for the lost, God has to deal with your sin. It's not your sins that are so important. It's your sin. Without Christ, you're not a child of God. Uh, your heritage is still in Adam. In Adam all die. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. The wages of sin is death. Uh, you're not a sinner because you sin. You sin because you're a sinner. Right. You're born in Adam. In Adam all die. That's, that's our heritage without Christ. But God's remedy for the sinner is very simple. Uh, turn to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. If you're still there in Romans, it'll be easy. Romans 1, verse 16. God's remedy for sin is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans 1, 16, he, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. God's remedy for sin is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you, do you understand what the gospel is? Uh, Paul described it in Corinthians. He says it's, it's that Christ died according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. That's it in a nutshell. That what Christ did for our sins, he came to die for our sins. He did. The Bible says he took the sins of the whole world, past, present, future upon himself. He died. He was buried. He, he took our sins as far as, what is it? The east is from the west. You know, he took them away. But the Bible says then he, he rose again. Victory over sin. He, he can offer life. He can offer victory because he's victorious over sin. That's the gospel. Jesus Christ. And our part is to apply God's remedy. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth you know, there's, the, there's our part. We can believe or not believe. The truth is there. Whosoever believeth should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we need to apply God's remedy. Now, part of that is just agreeing with God that we are sinners. The Bible says all of sin. It says the wages of sin is death. But we also need to believe who Christ is and what he's done. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The gospel. We need to believe the gospel. And the Bible says we need to call upon him. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible, Jesus said, you must be born again. There's a difference between knowing and receiving. I feel like I talk to people regularly who know about Jesus, who believe that Jesus was there, that God is there, but they've never been born again. They've never received him. Now, sometimes it's hard to, hard to know. I mean, we don't know a person's heart. But listen, uh, the Bible says he came unto his own and his own received him not. But it said, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We must believe and we have to receive him. The Bible says we call upon him as Lord and Savior. Lord, save me. Romans chapter 5 and, and verse 20 talks about just the last part of the verse. He says, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Now, as you look at sin, it's a terrible part of our world. Sin abounds. It's all around us. But you know what? Grace is more. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And the Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. It says there's none righteous, no, not one. Sin has affected us all. But God's solution is greater. God's solution is Jesus Christ. The interesting thing is that's God's only solution. There's no plan B. God doesn't say, well, if you don't like trust in Jesus. No, that's the only solution. In Acts 4.12, the disciples preach, neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only through the name of Jesus. Listen, it's not through Buddha. It's not through the Pope. 
Popes always give you a false name anyway. It's not through Muhammad. You know, it's, it's not through Confucius. It's not through your Uncle Joel. <laughs> it's only through the name of Jesus. No other name. Jesus confirmed that. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, he's the only way to God. And it's all about a relationship. And that relationship has to be at God, on God's terms. God says the only way to come to him is through his blessed son. If you died today, would you get the just results of your sin and go to hell? Or have you been forgiven by the blood of Jesus? The gospel. Sin. It's a terrible subject. It's a terrible thing. It condemns us all. We've all sinned. Sometimes we sin on purpose. Sometimes we sin accidentally. Sometimes we sin just because we can't meet the standard of holiness, just by our own inability. But let me encourage you. Let me warn you, I should say. Don't end your life committing the greatest sin of all, of unbelief. Don't let that be the, the final sin that, uh, that you stand before God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. God is the truth. God's word is the truth. It's true that we're born in sin. But it's also true that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we can be saved. You know, there's times when you may doubt what God has done. Get back into God's word and just confirm it. If you've called upon the name of the Lord Jesus, God says he'll save you. If you haven't, if you're not sure about your salvation, you know, the Bible talks about working out your own salvation. It's not talking about salvation by works. He's just saying, listen, you need to follow it to the end. See what God has done. Have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a big subject, as you can see. And I hope that this will encourage you not only to see that, uh, what's going on around us, but that God has a solution for it. And it won't, it won't be the way of things forever. You know, there's coming a day when God will, will put aside sin and death. And uh, this, this life will have seemed like a vapor. Just a, a brief thing. God has, uh, has good things in store for us. What about you this morning? Are you still ruled by sin? Or have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? If, if you're not sure, take care of it today. Your sin nature will say, put it off. Your sin nature will say, ah, I don't have to have that. But listen to that still small voice, the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart, saying, I love you. I sent my son to die for you. Won't you believe? Won't you believe? Let's go to him in, in prayer this morning. Father, thank you so much for your word. Uh, Lord, there's so much more. and uh, Father, we don't understand everything, but this is so simple. Help us to understand that we've fallen short of your holiness and your goodness and your glory. Uh, Lord, that we don't deserve your blessing. And yet you, you show it to us and commend it to us in uh, sending your son Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray if there are those this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would draw them and they might trust you today. pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.